What? How? Who? Why? Wondering how to ask questions in Italian? Every day you need to use question words in Italian to find out something. This is the opposite of just forming sentences, which are used to make a statement, give a command, or more generally, to deliver a piece of information. Using question words in Italian plays a big part in everyday conversation, especially if you're traveling. When on vacation in Italy, the majority of the time you'll be asking questions like, where is the closest public toilet? How do I get to St. Mark's Square? In this lesson, you will learn everything you need to know about asking questions in Italian. Sei pronto? Are you ready? Andiamo! Let's go! Ciao ciao! Mi chiamo Michelle, sono la Intrepid Guide, la vostra guida per imparare l'italiano, per viaggiare o per entrare in contatto con le vostre origini italiane come me, attraverso il mio metodo originale 8020. Hi, my name is Michelle, I'm the Intrepid Guide, your guide to learning Italian for travel or to connect with your Italian heritage like I did, all by using my unique 80-20 method. And you can check out my courses at intrepiditalian.com. Let's start off by exploring the different types of questions that can be asked and how to form them in Italian. We'll start with the easiest and work our way up to the most articulated ones. Simple questions. The first thing you need to know is that asking questions in Italian is not as complicated as it sounds, so don't worry. In most cases, forming a question in Italian is really easy because it's just a matter of putting a question mark at the end when writing and using the right intonation when speaking. This is how you can turn a simple statement into a question. We call these simple questions. Here are some examples. Maria vive in Germania. Maria lives in Germany. Maria vive in Germania. Does Maria live in Germany? When we see these two sentences in Italian, we clearly recognize the second one as a question because of the question mark at the end. Whereas when we enunciate them out loud, what we'll hear is a rising pitch in the voice in the second one, which is a clear signal that a question has been asked. Unlike English, in Italian there is no inversion of the subject and predicate, also because most of the time personal pronouns such as io, tu, lui, lei, noi, voi, loro, I, you, he, she and so on in Italian are implicit, but instead the intonation of your voice rises towards the end of the sentence. Sometimes when the subject is explicit, a question can be formed by reversing the subject and verb. But this is by no means mandatory. It's just a stylistic choice. Here are some examples. I ragazzi stanno studiando. The kids are studying. I ragazzi stanno studiando? Stanno studiando i ragazzi? Are the kids studying? Also notice how the word order in Italian is not 100% fixed. The following questions are both grammatically correct. What changes is what part of the question we want to emphasize. Usually, but this is not a fixed rule, the stressed element is the one that comes after the verb. Take a look at this example. Andiamo al cinema alle 8? Are we going to the cinema at 8 p.m.? Andiamo alle 8 al cinema? Are we going to the cinema at 8 p.m.? Simple questions or simple interrogative clauses are also called polar questions because they require a specific answer, which is either yes, sì, si, or no, no. For example, Ti piace questa canzone? Do you like this song? Parli spagnolo? Do you speak Spanish? Hai mangiato? Have you eaten? Si chiama Paolo? Is his name Paolo? Lavori da casa? Do you work from home? There are also questions which give a choice between two or more answers. We call these alternate questions, and in Italian they are formed with connectors such as O, oh, oppure. Again, remember that in Italian we don't need to change the order of the sentence to ask the question, or put the auxiliary at the beginning, like in English, where we say do or does or are or is. Take a look at these examples. Vuoi del tè o del caffè? Would you like some tea or some coffee? Preferisci viaggiare in treno o in aereo? Do you prefer to travel by train or by plane? Vivi con i tuoi genitori oppure da solo? 
Do you live with your parents or by yourself? Ti piace di più la carne o il pesce? Do you like meat or fish more? Quest'estate vai al mare o in montagna? Are you going to the beach or to the mountains this summer? Rhetorical questions. Another common type of question is when you don't expect an answer. They're just trying to make a point. Now these are called rhetorical questions. Rhetorical questions are often used for marketing or literary purposes to catch the audience's attention, but also in everyday life to persuade people to get them to agree with an easy and obvious statement. Here are some examples. Non è una splendida giornata oggi? Isn't today a wonderful day? Ti sembra questa l'ora di arrivare? Does this look like the time to arrive? Stai scherzando? Are you kidding? Sei scemo o cosa? Are you dumb or what? Chi non vorrebbe essere milionario? Who wouldn't want to be a millionaire? Question words in Italian. Now let's take a look at the so-called question words or interrogative words. Question words in Italian will help you to ask for precise information. That is, when you're expecting more than just a yes or no answer, but rather a specific answer, such as an indication, a time, a price, a reason, and so on. Question words in Italian you'll need to know are as follows. Chi? Who? Whom? Dove? Where? Quando? When? Che? Cosa? What? Come? How? Perché? Why? Quale? Quali? Which? Quanto? Quanta? Quanti? Quante? How much? Generally speaking, with questions that begin with a question word and you want to mention the subject, this subject is placed at the end of the sentence. Later, however, we'll see that this is not always the case. Here are some examples. Quando arriva Chiara? When does Chiara arrive? Chi è lui? Who is he? Come si chiama tuo fratello? What's your brother's name? Let's take a look at each Italian question word one by one and learn how to use them in real life situations. The interrogative word for who in Italian is Chi? This question word only refers to people and it can be either singular, referring to one person, or plural, referring to two or more people. Let's take a look at some examples. Chi vuole venire con me al mercato? Who wants to come with me to the market? Chi è il responsabile del negozio? Who is the store manager? Chi parla? Who's speaking? Chi è quel ragazzo? Who is that guy? Chi è il presidente della Repubblica Italiana? Who is the president of the Italian Republic? When you are asking who owns something, start the question in Italian with Di chi? Of who? For example, Di chi è questa giacca? Whose jacket is this? Di chi sono questi occhiali da sole? Whose sunglasses are these? Di chi è la borsa blu? Who owns the blue bag? The question word Dove is used to inquire about places and directions to find out where something is located. For example, Dove abiti? Where do you live? Dove devo andare? Where do I have to go? Dove posso trovare i bagni pubblici? Where can I find the public toilets? Dov'è la gelateria? Where is the ice cream shop? Dov'è la stazione centrale? Where is the main station? As you can see in the examples, when the third person singular of the verb essere, e, is used, it combines with the question word dove, and we add an apostrophe to connect the two, so it becomes dove, similar to the English it's. Like chi, Dove can also be combined with a preposition to form fixed phrases. For example, Da dove vieni? Where do you come from? Di dove sei? Where are you from? Literally, of where are you? Dimmi quando, quando, quando. Does this popular Italian song ring any bells? Well, if you want to ask about a time or date in Italian, you use quando, meaning when. Make sure you stress the D sound, which is voiced, as opposed to the T sound, which is unvoiced, which could change the meaning completely. Now, we'll learn more about quanto later in this lesson. Let's take a look at some examples. Quando parte l'aereo? When does the plane leave? Quando vai a Capri? When are you going to Capri? Quando è il tuo compleanno? When is your birthday? 
Quando va in Italia, Luca? When is Luca going to Italy? Quando inizia lo spettacolo? When does the show start? When you want to ask what time something happens or what time someone does something, in Italian you can be more specific by using A che ora? At what time or what time? Here are some examples. A che ora ti alzi la mattina? What time do you get up in the morning? A che ora arriva il treno per Roma? What time does the train to Rome arrive? To answer a question that starts with a che ora, we must always use alle plus the time. For example, alle due. At two o'clock. Alle sette e mezza. At 7.30. Alle dieci e un quarto. At a quarter past ten. The only exception is when it's one o'clock, midday or midnight. For example, a luna e venti. At 1.20. A mezzogiorno. At midday. A mezzanotte. At midnight. The next interrogative question translates to the English what. Che and cosa. Now these can be used on their own or combined to form the interrogative che cosa. Both forms, cosa and che cosa, can be used interchangeably. Here are some examples. Cosa vuoi? What do you want? Che cosa c'è per colazione? What is there for breakfast? Cos'è successo? What happened? Che cosa vuoi bere? What do you want to drink? Cosa posso fare per lei? What can I do for you? Attenzione! If there is a noun that follows the Italian question word, then che must be used. Take a look at these examples. Che ore sono? What time is it? Che giorno è oggi? What day is it today? Che lavoro fai? What work do you do? The use of che with a verb is not entirely wrong, but it's more typical of spoken Italian in the southern regions of Italy and is more common in speaking than in writing. For example, Che ti ha detto? What did he tell you? Che fai? What are you doing? Che facciamo stasera? What are we doing tonight? Do you remember what happens with the interrogative dove when it combines with e? The same thing happens here as well with Cosa o che cosa? It combines with the third person singular e, or more generally, with the word starting with a vowel, or with the letter h, which is silent in Italian. They can become one word and are linked by an apostrophe. Here's some examples. Cos'è questo? What's this? Che cosa hai detto? What did you say? Cos'era quel rumore? What was that noise? The Italian question word for how is come. Come is used to ask simple and common questions, such as Come stai? How are you? Come ti chiami? What's your name? Literally, how do you call yourself? Come is also used to ask about the state of things and the way that something is done. Here are some examples. Com'è il tempo oggi? How is the weather today? Come si arriva al Museo Egizio? How do you get to the Egyptian Museum? Com'è andata la festa ieri? How did the party go yesterday? Come sei arrivato qui? How did you get here? Come sono andate le vacanze? How were your holidays? Notice how come, followed by the third person singular of essere, e, combines with it to form the question come. Here's a tip. When what is used with the meaning of pardon, it is translated with come and not cosa in Italian. Here are some examples. Il treno è in ritardo di 10 minuti. Come? Non ho capito. The train is 10 minutes late. Pardon? What? I didn't get that. The word perché in Italian is a little tricky, as it means both why and because. So how do you tell the difference, huh? Well, you have to listen to the intonation. Remember, questions in Italian have a rising pitch towards the end of the phrase. And of course, pay attention to the context. Here are some examples of perché used as a question word. Perché i musei sono chiusi il lunedì? Why are the museums closed on Mondays? Perché sei in Italia? Why are you in Italy? Perché piangi? Why are you crying? Here are some examples of perché used in an answer. Non vengo al cinema perché sono stanco. I'm not coming to the cinema because I'm tired. Siamo rilassati perché siamo in vacanza. 
We're relaxed because we're on holiday. Ci piace l'Italia perché si mangia bene qui. We like Italy because you eat well here. If you want to inquire about the reason for something, instead of using perché, you can use the phrase come mai, which translates to how come. Come mai is a less direct and demanding way to ask someone why they're doing or not doing something. It also shows a genuine interest in knowing the answer. Here's an example. Come mai sei triste? Raccontami. How come you're sad? Tell me. So far we've looked at invariable question words, meaning that they don't change their form and are always the same. The word we're going to look at now is an exception to this rule. The interrogative for which in Italian is quale, meaning which one, when referring to a singular noun. However, quali, meaning which ones, is used when referring to a plural noun. On top of this, when quale comes before a noun that starts with a vowel, the final e is dropped and we use the form qual. Here are some examples. Qual è il tuo colore preferito? What's your favorite color? Quale autobus va alla stazione? Which bus goes to the station? Quali sono i tuoi passatempi? What are your hobbies? We use this interrogative word when asking to choose from a given set of items. Attenzione! Sometimes we use qual, quale or quali in Italian even though we would want to say what in English. That's because the Italian cosa refers to the identity of someone or something. In other words, it describes something or someone. It doesn't name something or someone. Take a look at this example. Cos'è? What is it? È un libro. It's a book. But... Qual è il tuo libro preferito? What's your favorite book? Orgoglio e pregiudizio di Jane Austen. Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. Meaning, among all of the books, name your favorite. Quanto is the question word used to ask how much or how many. As we saw with quale and quali, this interrogative word also has more than one form. Quanto is used with masculine singular nouns. Quanta is used with feminine singular nouns. Quanti is used with masculine plural nouns. Quante is used with feminine plural nouns. Let's take a look at a few examples. Quanta pasta hai mangiato? How much pasta did you eat? Quante persone visitano il Colosseo ogni giorno? How many people visit the Colosseum every day? Quanti giorni vi fermate a Napoli? How many days are you staying in Naples? Quanto tempo ci vuole per arrivare a Venezia? How much time does it take to get to Venice? There is, however, one exception which will make your life easier. When we ask how much, which is followed by a verb and not a noun, we use the form quanto, and you don't have to change it to agree with gender and number. For example, Quanto costa? How much does it cost? Quant'è? How much is it? Here, the O drops and an apostrophe is added to combine quanto with E. The question, how old are you in Italian, is Quanti anni hai? Literally, how many years do you have? Another important fixed phrase that you can form with quanto is Da quanto tempo? Which translates to the English question, how long? For example, Da quanto tempo studi l'italiano? How long have you been studying Italian? While in English, interrogative words such as who, what, where and when are always found at the beginning of a sentence, in Italian, question words are often put in the first sentence, but not always. For example, if you want to emphasize the person you're talking to or about, you can put the personal pronoun or noun first. For example, Loro, cosa ne pensano? What do they think about it? Tu, come ti chiami? What's your name? Literally, how do you call yourself? Marta, quando arriva? When does Marta arrive? Furthermore, in Italian, prepositions such as of, with, to, from and so on always precede the interrogative words. Unlike in English, in Italian, a question never ends with a preposition. For example, Di dove sei? Where are you from? Not Dove sei di? Con chi stai parlando? Who are you talking to? Not 
Chi stai parlando con? Per cosa ti serve questo? What do you need this for? Not. Cosa ti serve questo per? How do you answer questions that use a question word in Italian? In most cases, you just answer using the same verb used in the question, but this is often implicit, plus the piece of information that's needed. For example, Dov'è il bagno? Where is the toilet? È in fondo a destra. It's at the bottom right. Quanto costa? How much does it cost? Costa 10 euro. It costs 10 euros. Quali lingue parli? What languages do you speak? Parlo inglese e tedesco. I speak English and German. When you don't know the answer, you can say Non lo so. Or Non so. Followed by the original question. For example, A che ora apre il negozio? What time does the shop open? Non lo so. I don't know. Non so a che ora apre il negozio. I don't know what time the shop opens. Another common type of question in speaking is question tags. We use question tags to verify information that we think is true or correct by adding the so-called question tag at the end of the statement to turn it into a question. In English, we say things like, isn't it? Are you? Don't you? Didn't she? And so on. To form question tags in Italian, there's no set rule like in English. You can simply add the following phrases to the end of a statement as you see fit and of course have a rising intonation as you say them. No? O no? Giusto? Sbaglio? O sbaglio? Vero? Non è vero? Here are some example sentences. I musei sono aperti oggi, no? Museums are open today, aren't they? Ti piace la pizza, vero? You like pizza, don't you? Tua sorella si chiama Giulia, giusto? Your sister's name is Giulia, isn't it? So far we've looked at direct questions, that is, questions that go straight to the point. Sometimes, however, this type of question is phrased in a more roundabout way to form an indirect question. Indirect questions are generally more formal and polite. To form them in Italian, you have to add a phrase at the beginning, such as Può dirmi? Can you tell me? Dimmi. Tell me. Vorrei sapere. I'd like to know. Mi chiedo. I wonder. Non capisco. I don't understand. Ti dispiace dirmi. Do you mind telling me? Here are some example sentences. Vorrei sapere a che ora apre il negozio. I'd like to know what time the shop opens. Mi chiedo perché l'hai fatto. I wonder why you did that. Può dirmi quanto costa? Can you tell me how much it costs? Got a trip coming up and want to communicate with your Italian partner or Italian relatives? Learn Italian with my unique 80-20 method. Visit intrepiditalian.com where you'll find my popular online self-paced video courses used by over thousands of students around the world. In the meantime, master how to conjugate Italian verbs by watching this video here. A presto! Ciao!